Hi everyone, it's favourites time again. Don't ask me how that happened. The last few months has just been so busy and it has flown by so fast. But before I get on to my beauty favourites, I just wanted to let you know that this video is in collaboration with one of my YouTube friends. Her name is Faces by Grace on YouTube. She's an Irish YouTuber and I think I've known her like, known her online for the last... Oh God, I don't even know how long. On Grace's channel, she talks about makeup, she does tutorials, but she also talks about fitness and anxiety and all of that kind of stuff. But one thing Grace is unbelievable at is Snapchat. So basically, she daily vlogs on Snapchat and it is so addictive, I cannot even begin to tell you. So I will leave Grace's Snapchat and YouTube channel below. Make sure you check her out. She is just one of those really nice good-hearted girls like you can tell that she just has such a big heart and she just has so much love and kindness to give everyone she's just a really lovely person to watch and kind of get to know online she's just really really sweet and i know that when we eventually meet in ireland we're going to have all of the chats and all of the lols over drinks I know that for sure. So don't forget to check Grace's channel out and now on to the favourites. My first favourite of the month actually makes me really sad because apparently this product has been discontinued and I'm so in love with it. It is the Laura Mercier Silk Cream Foundation. Mine is like all jacked up, I don't know why the lid is broken. The reason I love this foundation is because it's really hydrating but the coverage is like amazing and it just blends beautifully into the skin. I have it on today and my skin looks flawless and I've just found it. Oh my God, that lid keeps falling off, goodbye. What am I supposed to do? I know they're bringing out two new formulas and I've tried one of them, but it's just not as good as this. It's just not as good. So if anyone knows where there's like a lot of these in stock at the moment, try and buy some because it is an incredible foundation. The next base is the Clinique Moisture Surge CC Cream Compact with SPF 25 Hydrating Color Corrector. Whoa, okay, that's a long name, I didn't even realize. This is in the shade light to medium, but it is definitely not light at all. This is a, like CC cream, yeah. I would say it's like a CC cream. It's like a tinted moisturizer kind of feel on the skin. I use this when I am having those no makeup makeup days and I've fake tanned and my face is looking a bit white and I just want to pop out and run some errands and I need like a nice kind of light base on my face. This is the perfect color for that. It's just like a really nice kind of dark shade as you can see. And it looks really super natural on the skin but it gives you just a little bit of coverage and it's just gorgeous. So if you're looking for one of those super natural like everyday bases, definitely check this out. It is very hydrating so the oilier skin girls mightn't like it but if you're like normal to dry skin, definitely give it a try. I love this and whenever I see it on my skin, I always like look in the mirror and go, ooh, my skin's looking good today. I kind of forget I'm wearing makeup when I'm wearing it. So yeah, check it out. The next product I've been loving is the Laura Mercier Loose Translucent Setting Powder. This is quite raved about on YouTube as far as I know and I really like it. I've only recently tried it. It's just a loose setting powder and it's really good for just setting all of your makeup in place without altering the colour in any way, shape or form and I don't think it gives any flashback either. Not really much else I can say except for it's a really, really good setting powder and apparently a lot of celebrity makeup artists use it. So. That's saying something. If I look a bit blotchy, it's because I fake tanned and it's developing, so don't mind it. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you will know my eternal struggle with gel liner and liquid liners. I'm just, we just don't get along very well. It's just not a match made in heaven. But recently I tried the Bobbi Brown Longwear Gel Liner in the shade Black Ink, and this is incredible. I use this with the Zoeva Winged Liner Brush, and I don't know if it's the brush or the gel liner or a combination of the both, but this has made me like good at winged liner. Honestly, like I think my winged liner is pretty decent today anyway, and I used this in my last makeup tutorial with the Naked 3 palette, and it's so black and so smooth and it lasts really well, it doesn't flake off, it doesn't smudge, it doesn't transfer, it is just such a good gel liner. So if you're in the market, Bobby Brown is the winner. The best gel liner I've ever tried. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. 
I've fallen back in love with my Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade in the shade Bland. I used it today and I've been using it on a much, much smaller brush and I think I like it better. I don't know, like sometimes I hate this and sometimes I love it. It did dry up quite a lot so I had to put a few drops of rosehip oil in it to kind of make it a little bit creamier again and that definitely worked but as you can see it's looking a bit worse for wear inside. I had to kind of like mince it all up inside. But yeah, this is such an amazing, amazing shade for blondes. I get so many questions about what are the best colours for blondes and this is definitely one of the best I've ever found. It's a very grey based shade which is what you want because everything seems to pull very warm in blondes brows. That's a tongue twister, blondes, blondes brows. Um, everything tends to look quite like almost gingery in blondes brows so you need to go for something super grey and that will give you like the perfect shade it won't come up grey in your eyebrows don't worry love this and it's super sweat proof kind of bulletproof eyebrows as well so if you need to have a brow that lasts all day definitely give this a go you might have seen me use this recently in some of my tutorials it is the Pro Longwear Paint Pot from MAC in the shade Groundwork this is a really, really basic brown shade. It's super boring, but it makes such a great base for so many shades. I think I have it on today and I put it on underneath like a rose gold eyeshadow and I just deepened it up a little bit and it helps it to last longer, especially if you're working with something that has a bit of shimmer in it. Having that like sticky base like this is really good for kind of settling it down so the shimmers don't kind of fly off and go everywhere. I just really really like this and I feel like even and just applied alone to the eyes with a bit of mascara, this is a great eyeshadow by itself so MAC Paint Pot's a winner. I mentioned these lashes briefly in my drugstore favourites thingy video and I just wanted to mention them here again because honestly best lashes I've ever tried for my eye shape. These are the Socialize Glamorous Shorty. I do have to trim them a little bit because my eyes are quite small, but honestly, these are like glam, but natural at the same time. I don't have any lashes on today, but if you look at my last couple of tutorials, these are the lashes that I'm wearing. And the last few times I've posted pictures of myself on Instagram wearing lashes, these will be the lashes I'm wearing. They're really good quality. I can use the same pair multiple times as well, so it's great value for money. And yeah, I just think Chris has done an amazing job with this brand. The glue from Socialize is also fantastic. This one is in a really handy little paint strip. It's super thin, you don't end up with like chunky glue all over your lashes, and it just sticks down really evenly and nicely. Great products, check them out. I have a couple of lipsticks here to show you. The first one is the Laura Mercier Lip Parfait Creamy Colour Balm in the shade Sinful, spelt with a C-I-N-N -N instead of S-I-N. This is just a very basic brownie pinky nude, but it's so lovely on the lips for daytime. It looks like such a gorgeous colour and it's also really, really comfortable. It's very creamy, very moisturising, hence why it's called Colour Balm. And I just think this is a great lipstick range. You know I love my Laura Mercier products anyway, like especially the lipsticks. But these are fantastic. I also have another colour which is kind of like a peach, but I much prefer this one. I think it's fab. So if you're in the market for like a nude kind of everyday lipstick, try this one. Another lipstick I have to show you is the Marc Jacobs Le Marc Lip Cream. Just I think it's just their regular lip range in the shade Oh Miley. I got this ages ago from um, Sephora in a pure package and I never really like ended up wearing it that much. But recently I've really been liking it. It's kind of like that Kendall Jenner shade that's just coming out but a little bit less orange. It's a super punchy, vibrant pink and it just looks gorgeous on the lips. It's nice and matte too so it's super long wearing. And it's a great formula. I need to delve into the Marc Jacobs range more because this and a lip gloss is all I own from him. So I'll have to check out some more stuff. This lipstick is fab. It's just like such a nice color. It's a real punchy, deep pink. I have a nail polish to show you today. This is Essie's Spin the Bottle. It's what I have on my nails today, not on my accent nail, but on the other nails. It's just a really gorgeous, super creamy white pink. I just love it. It's one of those really like opaque, pale colours that just makes you look nice and tanned and stuff. I really, really like it. Lastly, for makeup, I have an eyeshadow first. This is the Laura Mercier Baked Eye Colour Wet to Dry in the shade Terracotta. I talked about this ages ago on my blog, but I've been using it loads again lately. 
Look at that color. It's like a really burnt orangey red and it looks so amazing on the lids, wet or dry, depending on how dramatic you want to go. And oh my God, it just looks so gorgeous on blue eyes. It's one of the most beautiful shades I own. It's like MAC Coppering, but like way nicer. And it's like, oh, I'm trying to think of another shade. It's like that red shade in the Lorac Pro palette, but way nicer. <laughs> it's just amazing. Have a little swatch if you're by a Laura Mercier counter. It's just so gorgeous. I love it so much. Ah, so look, at, look at how it shimmers in the light. It's so beautiful. I also have a, oh, take away this little brush. I also have a blush from Clarence today. This is just the perfect everyday Every girl needs this kind of shade blusher. It is the Clarins Blush Prodige. Oh my God, I can't speak. Blush Prodige Illuminating Cheek Color in the shade 8 Sweet Rose. It's just like the perfect everyday pink. I feel like if you have this blush in your collection, it would go with any look you tried, like anything. It's got a matte section and also some shimmery sections, but when you put it on the cheek, you don't look shimmery. It just kind of has a natural radiance to it, but you can also just go straight for the matte kind of section there. If you don't want that radiance, it's not really that obvious in the skin anyway. I just love this blusher. It's so nice. And the packaging of Clarins is gorgeous. I love this. Just like everything else I own, it's a bit smudgy, but I just love it. I hate these little brushes though. Who uses them? Who? I want to know. Tell me. Do you use your brushes? No. It just wastes room in the compact. Next up I have a face mask and yes, I have jumped on the Glam Glow train and it's a good train to be on. I was so skeptical about these masks because when something is really hyped up on YouTube, you're kind of like, oh, I don't know, like, is it just, you know, everyone's hopping on the same bandwagon, but this is really a great mask. I only got the little size, I bought this myself, I only got the little size because I didn't want to splash out like the, I don't know, $80 or something that it is, unless I knew it was really good, but it really, really is good. I got like five or six uses out of this mask, it's completely finished now, but it's just fabulous. I don't know what it is that makes it different to other K masks that I've used, but I just really feel like it draws the impurities out of your skin. Like it really, when it's drying in your face, you can kind of, you can see your pores. You can kind of see your pores when you do any clay mask, but it just really feels like it's extracting the horribleness out of your skin. Sometimes with skincare, all you can say is that it's working and that you're noticing a difference. But you don't quite know why or what it's doing. I just noticed that whenever I use this, I would use it like when I'm lying in the bath or something and my skin always looked brighter and fresher and less congested afterwards. And that's kind of all I need is when I can look in the mirror and see a difference, I know it's a good product. And it just dripped on my wrist. Gross. I'm really apprehensive to talk about this next product because the last time I talked about something from this range, people had a go at me for recommending something so expensive. but. It's a product I love and some of you can afford these things, some of you can't and that's fine. You don't need expensive skincare if you don't want to buy it, but some of you can, so I'm going to recommend it. My next favourite is the La Prairie Skin Caviar Luxe Cream. This is wildly expensive. Have a look online if you want to know how much it is. I was gifted this when they were launching their sheer version of this cream. This is the heavier version and I have the sheer version of the cream in my drawer waiting for summer so that I can have something a little bit lighter. This cream is obviously, it's called Skin Caviar, it's made with caviar and I have to say like I would never recommend something really expensive unless I really liked it because I would feel so bad if someone went out and spent their money and they didn't like it. Like honestly I would only say these things if I really, really liked it, and I'm not being paid to say this. It was gifted to me, yes, but I am not being paid to say this. I can guarantee you that much. But this moisturizer is fantastic. I mean, like, since the first week I started using this, I have noticed dramatic differences in my skin. My skin just drinks this up. My makeup is applying so much nicer. I always moisturize, I always look after my skin. But there's something about using this moisturizer day and night that is 
my skin is just like drinking it up and I feel like it's really good for like my lines I feel like my skin is just plumper more hydrated I feel like the pigmentation of my skin is better and even like my pores look a little bit smaller when I use this I don't think it's all in my head again like I was saying about the mask I can look in the mirror and really see a difference every morning and it's amazing if you have the budget I would recommend this if you don't don't even think about it like just don't worry about it use the moisturizers that you love but I just wanted to let you guys know that it is a fabulous product even though the price hurts my eyes to look at. Next I have a body moisturizer. This is by Rosehip Asano. Asano Rosehip? One or the other. This is the Intensive Hydrating Body Lotion. This is so good. It's not one of those moisturizers that you can use like in the morning because I do feel like it kind of sits on top of my skin for a while. Like you really have to rub it in to get rid of like the white cast on your skin. But when I use it at night, I feel like my skin drinks it up. It is so gorgeous. It smells really nice too. My skin just loves it. It feels so hydrated and supple after using it. It's just like a really good body lotion. It's got loads of gorgeous oils in it and it's all like natural, no parabens kind of stuff. I really, really like this one. I've been getting a lot of questions about fake tan recently and I just wanted to let you know about my favorite one at the moment. This is the Bondi Sans Self Tanning Foam in Dark and the Self Tanning Mist in Dark. The reason I use both is because I use this one all over my body and then I tan my face and hands and feet and stuff like that with this one because it's just kind of a light mist. I don't know, it just works for me and you can kind of like get into the nooks and crannies. <laughs> nooks and crannies, <laughs> that sounds weird. But this is a really gorgeous color tan. It's not too green, it's not too red. It's just a really gorgeous bronze color and it develops beautifully overnight. And when you wash it off in the morning, you have a really nice glow left on your skin. And I feel like this is one of the best tans I've tried for like wearing off quite nicely. I don't feel like it makes my skin go scaly or flaky. I feel like it wears off really nicely and even. Some other tans I've tried will wear off like really quickly in the cracks of your elbows or like behind your knees and stuff like that. Whereas I feel like this one is quite even all over the body. So if you're in the market for a tan, definitely give Bandai Sands a go. I think it's now available in the UK and Ireland in Superdrug or something like that. So check it out. And lastly, I just wanted to mention this perfume from Lancome. It is La Vie et Belle, as far as I know. I think that's what it's called. This is a lot more like feminine and sophisticated and like girly than what I would normally go for. I usually like quite um, unisex fragrances, but when I tried this, I was so pleasantly surprised. I feel like it gets better as the hours go on. It's very it's sweet. I hate like super candy sweet fragrances. It's not sweet in that sense. It's got like a sweet smell to it, but it's very sophisticated and very chic. I feel like this is a very like chic fragrance for the evening, but it also is nice and light for the daytime. You can spray some on your wrist in store and leave it there for the day and see what you think of it, but it's so nice. I'm really pleasantly surprised by it. I love it and I've been wearing it a lot lately. A lot. And my last favorite of the month is this baby. This is my favorite of the month. She is like hating me right now. Say I'm mummy's favorite. I won't even look at the camera because I'm camera shy. Mm. This is Luna, by the way, in case you didn't know. This is my fur baby. They see me whip. They see me nay nay. Those are all the favorites we have today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll talk to you again real soon. You are hating life right now. <laughs>